when one thinks of electric cars, the Tesla immediately comes to mind. However, Mr. Elon Musk did not invent the wheel, since the origin of this type of vehicle goes back a long way. It is not known exactly when the first electric motors appeared, but what is certain is that they already existed at the beginning of the 19th century. In the year of 1828, Hungarian engineer and priest Anius Istvan Jedlik created an electric motor, formed by a stator, a rotor, and a commutator, which he later adapted to a small-scale car, making it move by itself. In 1834, the American blacksmith Thomas Davenport invented a similar vehicle, which operated on a small electrified rail in a circular way. At the same time, in Holland, Professor Sibrandus Stratton and his assistant, Christopher Becker, created a small-scale electric car powered by non-rechargeable primary batteries. Almost in parallel, the Scottish inventor Robert Anderson created a larger electric motor, which was used to drive a carriage. Despite all the efforts, since batteries were not rechargeable and offered little autonomy, these vehicles failed to be of practical use. It was not until the year 1859 that rechargeable batteries appeared, when the French inventor Gaston Planté created the solid acid battery. Later, in 1881, another French inventor, Camille Alphonse Forêt, significantly improved its design and capacity, which led to its manufacturing on an industrial scale. Although there were a couple of attempts to create bicycles and electric tricycles in previous years, it was not until 1884 that the English inventor, Thomas Parker, responsible for electrifying the London Underground, built the first electric production car of the world, using high-capacity rechargeable batteries of his own design. On the other hand, the first electric car in the United States was developed between 1890 and 1891 by William Morrison. It was a seven-passenger carriage capable of reaching a maximum speed of 14 miles per hour. It's surprising to know that before the internal combustion vehicles predominated, electric cars already held several distance and speed records, having managed to break the 60 mile per hour barrier since April 29, 1899. Even by then, there were already battery powered taxi fleets in London and New York, called Hummingbirds, because of such a characteristic bus they emitted. It is worth to mention Samuel's Electric Carriage and Wagon Company, which had up to 62 operating units. Electric vehicles had several advantages over their competitors of the early 20th century. They had neither the vibration, the smell, nor the noise associated with gasoline cars, nor did they need gearboxes. Well, steam-powered cars didn't need them either, but it took them only 45 minutes to start on a cold morning. Additionally, electric cars didn't need a manual effort to start them, like gasoline was, which had a crank that had to be turned hard for the engine to run. Electric cars gained popularity among wealthy people, who used them as city vehicles, where their short range did not represent such a big disadvantage. Due to its ease of operation, this type of transport was promoted as the ideal for women. It then became stigmatized so much as a woman's car that some manufacturers chose to put radiators in the front to disguise the vehicle's propulsion system. Although at the beginning, the acceptance of electric cars was halted by the lack of energy infrastructure, by 1912, many houses were already connected to electricity, thus allowing an increase in their popularity. An interesting fact is that by the turn of the century, 40% of cars were powered by steam, 38 by electricity, and only 22 by gasoline. A total of 33,842 electric cars were raised in the United States, thus becoming the country where they had the most acceptance. The first of these cars were massive and ordered carriages, designed for upper-class customers, who made them popular. They had luxurious interiors packed with expensive materials. Sales of these cars peaked before 1915. To solve the little autonomy they had, a battery exchange service was created, which operated from 1910 till 1924. Unfortunately, by the beginning of the 20s, there was a decline in the use of these type of vehicles mainly due to a greater and better road infrastructure, which required a transport with a greater reach than they offered. The discovery of large reserves of oil globally made gasoline widely available and at affordable prices, making operating cars, powered by such hydrocarbon, cheaper over longer distances.
The electric cars were limited for urban use due to their low speed from 15 to 19 miles per hour and poor autonomy from 31 to 40 miles, while gasoline cars could go faster and travel longer distances. This became even easier to use once Charles Kettering invented the electric starter, eliminating the need for a crank to start them and the noise they produced was reduced by using the muffler created by the Reeves brothers. And finally, the series production of cars, initiated by Henry Ford, lowered their prices, while the price of similar electric vehicles continued to rise, costing almost twice as much as one of gasoline. The production of electric cars was very limited during those years and, a decade later, the industry as such had disappeared. The most successful car in this first golden year of these vehicles was, without a doubt, the Detroit Electric, which manufactured about 13,000 cars from 1907 till 1939, which cost more than 3,000 US dollars and offered a range of 81 miles. The years passed without a major resurgence in the use of this technology in cars, other than some experiments by European countries that fought the World War II and were short of fuel. In the 50s, there was a serious attempt to revive the sector with the Henny Kilowatt, based on the Renault Dauphin, but its performance was poor against its gasoline peers, and production ceased in 1961. Also, the American Motors Corporation, together with the Sonatron Corporation, tried to manufacture an electric car powered by self-rechargeable battery, which could be recharged quickly and weigh less than the traditional solid acid batteries. However, it was not successful either. In the following years, there were various efforts, whether with concept or limited series production cars, to promote the use of the technology, but without much success. New failures for American Motors Corporation with the all-electric Ramble American, the General Motors Electro Ver, or the Enfield 8000, of which at least 112 units were manufactured. Interestingly enough, one of the most renowned electric cars of this period was a lunar rover vehicle, or LRV, which became the first manned vehicle on the moon. After years outside the spotlight, the energy crisis of the 70s and 80s renewed interest in electric cars, which led General Motors to create its GM Impact concept car, presented in 1990. At the beginning of the 90s, the California Air Resources Board CARV, began to press for more fuel-efficient vehicles and lower emissions, seeking to achieve as a final objective zero emissions. In response, several car makers developed electric vehicles, such as the Chrysler T-Van, the Ford Ranger EV, the General Motors EV1 and the S10 EV, the Honda EV Plus, the Nissan Altra EV with lithium battery and the Toyota RAV4 EV. These companies were accused of wanting to please the car in order to continue selling cars in the lucrative California market, while not properly promoting electric vehicles, making believe that consumers did not want them, but they did join the old industry promoters protesting violently against the mandate of the car. General Motors was most affected by this situation, since consumers were not allowed to buy the vehicles after finishing their lease period, that is, they had to return them at the end of it. Toyota and some GM dealers sued the car, which eventually ended with a zero emission mandate. Thanks to this, except Toyota that managed to place all the remaining RAV4 EVs, almost all other electric production cars were removed from the market, and in some cases, even destroyed by their manufacturers, as in the case of General Motors EV1s. The low price of the gasoline throughout the 90s made interest in fuel-efficient cars wane, and preference was given to the SUVs, which despite being not so good in hydrocarbon consumption, were affordable. It was not until the appearance of Tesla Motors with its Roadster, which it began to develop in 2004, that electric vehicles took a new momentum, this time it seems for good. This vehicle was based on the Lotus Elise, and was the first production car with lithium-ion batteries, and also the first fully electric which achieved a range of 200 miles per charge. It was sold from 2008 till 2012, making a total of 2,450 units. The next Tesla vehicle, the Model S, went on sale on June 22, 2012. Subsequently, Model X and much more recently Model 3 and Model Y, which will soon go on sale, were incorporated. In the not so long term, Tesla will return with a new version of the Roadster, which promises to be one of the fastest production vehicles in history, managing to accelerate from 0 to 60 in less than 2 seconds. With the arrival of Tesla, the electric vehicle market finally woke up, encouraging several other companies to develop their own models. From Nissan with the Leaf, 
to General Motors with the Bolt EV, and even currently several luxury car companies offer 100% electric models, such as BMW and Jaguar, among others, which will certainly give Elon Musk a lot of headaches. As technology becomes cheaper, autonomy increases, and recharge speed decreases, electric cars will make the final leap to become the preferred mobility solution for large cities or to travel long distances. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, so we can make more videos like this one. Thank you.